Hey, it's Matt from Monty's Guitars. I'm here with Guitar.com to guide you through how to restring an acoustic guitar. You're gonna need a string winder. Now they usually come with some kind of peggy, grippy, pulley outery thing. If they don't, then you can actually buy said appliance. Um, this is also helps if they're, the pegs are a little bit more grippy. The other thing you're gonna need is a good old fashioned pair of cutters. These are side cutters, piano cutters. It means that you can get right into the machine head and uh, get rid of any kind of loose ends that are gonna come and stab you in the finger. And of course, you're gonna need some of these, some strings. Let's get into it. So right, what I'm gonna do here is just slightly slacken the strings off. Get all of those. So that's all slack. Get them in the middle. Cut them. Nothing is going to happen to the neck. It's not going to shift. Nothing bad is going to happen, so don't worry about that. Alternatively, if you don't want to do that, you can do it individually. Right. So again, with this, get your strings, wrap them up and flip them through. This just stops them springing out. Right, so now we're going to get the pegs out of the board. So on this string winder, we've got this little kind of horseshoe thing on the end. You just put that over the top of the peg and lift it up and then it comes out pretty easy. So again, get the peg puller and put it over the peg like so and literally it's just simply lift it up, done. And rinse and repeat with all of them. If you do get some that are a little bit stiff, you can get this little device, which um, is just a little bit more aggressive, but also just safer on the peg. Um, put it over the top, slide this little collar down, that locks it on, and then pull it up. Uh, again, put the little widget over the peg, pop it down, push the collar down, Lift it up. So now it's time to restring. We're going to be using these Elixir NanoWeb Phosphor Bronze. These are great strings, they're really nice and dynamic, got a full body, but we still retain that high end clarity, which when it comes to acoustics is really, really important. The other bonus with these is they're coated, so they're going to A, last longer, and B, they'll be less aggressive on your fingers, and you won't get so much scraping noise when you're going up and down the fingerboard. It's a really good option. Now what I like to do with these is sort of do it kind of production line style. So I'm going to put all the strings in, put all the pegs in, and then we'll restring it. So I do all that all one at a time. Some of these pegs have got a flat end to them. Now what can happen there is that the, the ball end can get caught underneath here as it's put in. So you'll think it's all nice, it's all fine, um, but then as you tune it up and the extra tension comes on, this little thing will fire up and it's just not pleasant. So well, to get around that, one thing you can do really, really quick, get some sandpaper. This is like an 80 grit, it's quite, quite coarse, but anything will do. And you just wanna... See, a couple of passes and you've got an angle on there. Now what that means is that the ball end will sit under there and then just slide straight off and it will get caught where it's meant to be, which is between the top and the peg. So now, they've all, they've all got that angle on it so we don't have to worry about them popping up. So you wanna put the string into the hole and then put the peg in, making sure that this little groove is facing down towards the neck. So put that in and then try not to kink the string. Don't you see people doing this all the time? Don't do that, because as soon as you put a kink in the string, it's never gonna vibrate properly. So just and gently, and you can feel underneath, inside the guitar, that it is where it's meant to be. Which is, so if the peg's coming down like this and the top's like that, you want the ball end to be right here in that kind of, that, in that 90 degree bit. So you do that. And then it's just, it's just rinse and repeat with all the other ones. Put the string down, put the peg in with this groove facing towards the neck, down like that, and then pull it up. One other thing to mention, when you take a string out of a packet, you should be able to hold it up and it should have a nice curve to it. If you start seeing it going like 
sort of an S or any kind of anything else basically. What that means is that there's something wrong with the metal and again it's not going to vibrate properly. The intonation won't be perfect and also you're more likely to get rattles and buzzes and that kind of stuff. So again, string in, peg in with that groove towards the neck, pull it up, trying not to kink the string. The way they wrap the strings is designed so you don't have to pull them apart. So as you can see here, if I take this one out, it's literally just flip that round and you should be able to just do that, voila. So now all the strings are in, everything this end should be, should be good. Um, just double check. You might find these pop up a little bit, but it's just, you know, push them straight back down. It's absolutely fine. Now it's on to restringing. So the first thing to do to make this super easy is make sure that all the holes on your tuners are facing down the neck. So then you can just slide the string straight in. And now it's also key to mention that whatever the headstock shape, the idea of the string path, so when the strings go from the nut to the machine head should be as less of an angle as possible. If you wind it onto the outside, the wrong side of the machine head, what happens is the strings go up and then out really aggressively, and then you're creating more friction as the string goes through the nut. Also, the machine heads are geared to go the other way, so your tuning stability won't, won't be as good as that kind of thing. So here, you want to pass it through the post with these kind of three, three aside machine heads, you want to measure roughly about a machine head and a half. So you can see, see there, that kind of gap. Hold it, pull it back. And now the key is, is to keep, you want to keep this part of the string tight so that as you're winding it onto the post, it just, it goes on tight. There's going to be less chance of slippage, that kind of thing. Now, the way I do it is I do this weird kind of finger arabesque thing. So you can see it's kind of coming out at a right angle. So what that means is that I can keep tension on this part of the post. So it's just winding it down. As it gets round here, you can kind of slacken off a little bit. You want all the string, all the string windings to go down. Um, there are some other methods, but you know, this is the simplest one. And I aim for between two to three and a half um, winds on the wound, on the, the wound strings, so the bass strings. Just want to give it a little, little pull, and that should be that for that string. Um, then just cut it off as close as you can to the post. So again with this one, pass the string straight through, measure about a machine head and a half, and then pull back. Now we're keeping tension on this at all times. So now this string is round to there. Again, Bend it up. Quick stretch in. Again, cut it off, save your fingers. And it's just, it's a purely a case of rinse and repeat with this. So through the hole, measure about, and that's, in this case, I would pull back. So pull back about machine head and a half. Start winding it on. When it's round once, just bend it up. Make sure all the windings are going down. And again, so the hole on the machine head is pointing down the neck. Put the string through the hole. Get the string, pull it back a machine head and a half, and then wind it down. Now this here, this is well, eventually, when it is a wrap, this is called the wrap. So on the, it goes around the machine head. So you want this to be kind of as, as neat as possible, really. You want it to be nice and regimented and not too far apart, not crossed over each other, because anything like that just means that it's going to take longer to stretch in and get the guitar stable and to stay in tune. And again, cut it off nice and close. Now we're onto the plain strings, which are tricky little blighters. So what you want to do with these is measure out about two machine heads. Now what I like to do here, because you've got a lot of slack, is bring it 
around under and pull because now it's not going to move. That I can sort of pull as hard as I want to on that and that string's not going to slip. But again, you want every single wrap to go down nice and neat and the string to be tight as it's going on to the post of the machine head. Now obviously with this string, because we've got we had more going on to it, there's going to be more wraps, that's absolutely fine. Put it through the post and again the same as the B string, measure out two machine heads, pull it back, wrap it around and then keep tension on this part of the string. It's as simple as just keeping every wrap going underneath the other one. It's nice and regimented. Actually, that's another little point. When you're tuning or doing any adjustments of, with your guitar, try and do it in playing position. Because if I was to continue tuning the guitar like this, I mean, watch, I mean, that's, that's roughly an E. You can make it go flat. So if the guitar's weighing a lot, that's gonna put your tuning out and then you'll pick it up and everything will go completely skew if. So try and do everything in playing position. So I've tuned it up once, and now just stretch them in. So put your fing fingers underneath the string, don't pull it too hard, just a little tug. <laughs> so that's dropped a tone now. So let's tune that up. The reason this happens is it's, it's purely the string just getting under tension and all the winds coming together. Um, so it's nothing to worry about. And then do it one more time. So that's only that's only shifted, well not even a semitone. All done.